Okay, friends and family, today I want to do a little Bible study on the beginning. And uh, we'll start right here in Jeremiah 1 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. So we have formed thee in the belly. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. So now we know why woman is called woman. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not that I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Okay, then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build, and to plant. Okay? So, now we're going to look at Genesis. Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens, the heaven, and the earth. So we'll look at beginning here. It is 7225 Ray Sheath, and it is um, meaning to shake. Uh, that's the root word anyway. The first in place, time, order, or rank, specifically a first fruit, beginning, chiefest, uh, first fruits, part, time, principal thing. Okay? So that's um, Genesis 1 1. Now, Genesis 1 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of uh, research into the um, origins of where this English, these English words came from. And it's easy enough when you're using eSword. That's why I recommend it in my um, Bible studies tools that I use video. Um, so the earth was without form. We have the word to who. Okay. And it's 8414. Okay from an unused root meaning to lie waste a desolation of surface that is desert figuratively a worthless thing adver adverbally in vain confusion empty place without form nothing 
thing of not vain vanity waste wilderness okay so now we want to look at void unused uh, root meaning to be empty I thought that worked before. <laughs> this is fun to show people that might not know how to, uh, I mean, all of us are ignorant, right? So I'm a little bit ignorant. I'm ignorant as to uh, this word right here. Vacuity. Vacuity. The state of being vacuous or without contents. Vacancy, emptiness. Okay. So it's empty absence of thought or intelligence oh my god <laughs> okay so that is a uh, superficially an undistinguishable ruin okay emptiness okay so now uh, you might ask yourself mark what is this all about and i'm i'm gonna show you just be patient have a little patience now we're going to hop to Jeremiah 4.23. Actually, I'll start with Jeremiah 4.20. Ooh, it's 4.20. Destruction upon destruction is cried, for the whole land is spoiled. Suddenly are my tents spoiled. So if destruction is being cried and the whole land is spoiled, suddenly my tents are spoiled, that kind of means that something's there, right? and my curtains in a moment. How long shall I see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? Okay, and God is talking to us. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. Okay, question people. Do you know God? Do you know his word? Um, have you known him at all? Or do you just know some church system and some preacher that's teaching you, well, God goes on to say they are sodish children so let's look at that sodish silly foolish sodish make play the turn into foolish foolishness okay so God's saying his children are foolish right and actually he said it twice I guess that's twice for emphasis and they have none understanding they are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. Okay, let's look at the word. What's in the middle of no, of the word knowledge? We have now led. Okay, are you going to let the Lord and his word lead you? 423, I beheld the earth and lo, it was without form and void and the heavens and they had no light I beheld the mountains and lo they trembled and all the hills moved lightly I beheld and lo and there was is inserted by the translators and lo there was no man and all the birds of the heavens were fled I beheld and lo 
the fruitful place was a wilderness and there's that was is inserted by the translators also and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger for 427 for thus hath the Lord said the whole land shall be desolate yet will I not make a full end okay I'm going to point out that that full end right there we're in the process of a um, basically a second stage and uh, you may ask yourself why they call this period of time the age of grace knowing full well that our Lord Jesus Christ came into the flesh and was basically a sacrifice for our sin but yet he was also murdered um, that's all part of this full end when when we engage in repentance which I would emphasize the word repentance isn't saying I'm sorry God oh God I'm sorry please forgive me repentance actually means change okay so if we look up repent Let's get the new, well, I believe it, we'll find out right now. We'll both learn something together. This one will have both of them in there, so we'll go to Acts. Okay. to think differently or afterwards that is reconsider morally to feel compunction okay repent and repentance is 41 compunction for guilt including reformation by implication reversal of another's decision repentance Okay, so there was a quick little side study of repentance. Um, now, we were going to go back to Genesis and we were going to note, okay, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said let there be light and there was light okay what did it say right here in Jeremiah 428 and for this shall the earth mourn and the heavens above be black because I have spoken it now is that after the fruitful place was a wilderness and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger and you might ask yourself well Mark what's the significance of you bringing this up I mean we know Jesus we know Jesus came to save us all Well, we also know that Jesus is coming back after Satan gets here pretending to be God. And we also know that he's going to have a cup of wrath that he asked our Holy Father, basically, if there was any other way to do what he was being 
engaged in doing, let that be. But of course, there was no other way. So we, uh, my point would be, and well, not my point, but the Bible's point would be that this fierce anger, we're going to see it again. And my point, the point, well, the point I would like to make is that we don't want to end up having let Satan trick us through the deception of the rapture lie to actually be on the other end of this fierce anger. No, because we're going through the tribulation no matter what. Um, so the only difference I would say to somebody is, are you going to fall for Satan's lies and his tricks and then experience what God is telling us happened right here because I'm of the opinion and I would say at this point it's an educated opinion that there was an age before and it included the dinosaurs as well as our spiritual bodies we were created in Genesis in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void. So, um, right here, this is what some people call the gap theory. Okay, so we're we're talking about Tuhu Wabuhu and the law of first mention. So one two, and this is just to show you that I'm not alone. Um, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Jeremiah 4.23 I beheld the earth and lo it was without form and void and the heavens and they had no light. Some say that Jeremiah cannot be used as it is second and not first mentioned. It goes not backward but forward this rule. But there are really no problems because the context says it all. The answers are in Genesis 1 already. Now, what is the context in verse 2? There is darkness of which God says to let there be light. And in day 2, there is a funny thing. God does not say anything good about that day. Why? And what is that darkness? Well, we know that the Bible interprets the Bible. We read in Isaiah, Isaiah 45, 18, For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it, he created it not in to who okay not in vain he formed it to be inhabited I am the Lord and there is none else okay it says he did not create it to who in vain but formed it to be inhabited now God did create bara in the beginning bat yatsar or asa Yetzar Im implies molding with hands and asa is used of already existing material making it into something now when it says he created it not in vain the word is bara in other words when God created in the beginning it was not in vain to who but it was inhabited so we know that it was inhabited. It was inhabited by all of our spiritual bodies. God created every spiritual body. And when we're put into the womb, just like I showed you in Jeremiah, cha uh, verse, uh, Jeremiah chapter 1, when he says, Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. God already did know you. Okay, so as we go around in our pride, 
thinking that we made families and we we um, are responsible for this. Well, guess what? If you haven't taught any of your family any of this information, what good are you doing for your family? And I don't mean that to be, um, you know, obscene or cruel by any means. Uh, I'm saying it because I'm doing a Bible study here and I believe that it's very relevant to have uh, to say that. So, um, but it was inhabited. So with this in mind, it is clear that something had happened to make it to who. So the other thing I would point out is when everybody wants to say, Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve, Adam, Adam and Eve, they created, they were the first sinners. Um, that's not necessarily true by any means. But I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Because the word replenish also is used in Genesis. The word replenish, which also you have to ask yourself. Why is that word there? Why? Why is it there? And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful. Remember in Jeremiah, it said the fruitful place was what? What did it say? The fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down. Huh. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. Well, I just wanted to put that out on the table. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this Bible study. So Jeremiah only supports the idea that the creation in Genesis 1 and 2 is ruined or the creation of 1 2 is ruined now back to 2 day 2 why not good question well Lucifer and his angels had been dispelled from heaven into the firmament and therefore God would not say anything good about that the darkness is also described elsewhere it says in Jeremiah 4.23 that there was no light, same as Genesis 1.2. Okay, so we know there was a rebellion per uh, Revelations where um, a third of God's children followed uh, Lucifer. So all of this is prior to Adam and Eve. And um, if you're interested at all, in the providence of God in this age well in any age if you're interested at all in the providence of God you would do well to uh, study this until you're convinced that it's absolute truth because where do we want to lay our foundation do we want to lay it on a bunch of lies that people have told us or do we want to lay it on the truth right here in the beginning and uh, believe you me when a, um, when college people come up to you and go oh you're a Christian you believe the earth is only 6,000 years old guess what I just got done explaining to you and showing you in God's Word that that's another lie okay Adam and Eve may have been formed in the flesh 6,000 years ago but the earth was not the earth was not created 6,000 years ago and neither were the um, spiritual bodies that God created uh, in Genesis 1 the spiritual bodies that were um, the earth was without form and void 
uh, our spirit bodies and that that includes everybody who ever has been or will be in the flesh so it's really important to understand all that to recognize that the people in your family the Lord definitely put them there and uh, he put them there for a reason good bad or ugly so thank you for listening to this Bible study I enjoyed bringing it to you and have a good